recently, Microsoft has received backlash for cutting support of Windows 10. This meant that if you're one of the hundreds of millions of users that was still on Windows 10 and had those older components, you were literally cooked. Not to mention, Windows has always been known for installing programs you never asked for. I mean, I'm sure you've heard of Microsoft Edge and Copilot, but have you used them? Probably not. Now I'm not gonna lie, there are a lot of great tools to cut this blowware and nonsense from your PC, but it would be great if you didn't have to do it in the first place. If only there was an alternative that ran my favorite programs and was also free. Enemy spotted. Ah yes, I'll put my trust in a Q penguin nine times out of 10. Dear Microsoft, I have made a terrible mistake. Please accept all my data soul in my firstborn child just let me escape the terminal on a desktop experience in the year 2025 times 10. So today I will install Linux, try to get it to run some of my favorite creator programs, run some games, pop some tabs, and of course compare it to Windows. So let's get started. And the first step seems like it's a lot of fun because you have to choose among all these discos. And I think that's kind of like how Windows has Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10. And instead of having one operating system for all of the devices, Linux has over 600 that each have their own unique features. I don't know about you, but I don't have time to be looking through all this stuff i don't want to be hopping across distros so i went with the safest option out there mint now i say it is the safest because it is based on ubuntu and ubuntu has apparently the largest community online so if you ever come across a problem somebody else has probably dealt with it and posted it on some weird forum and so mint it was and like the ipad kid i am i followed this guy's tutorial from start to finish it basically involved disabling some settings in bios creating a usb device using rufus running through the setup but the rest was honestly just waiting or in other words scrolling Oh, the Linux Mint logo. And now it was time for the fun part, installing some games. But before we get into that, let's cover the PC I will be using. And you will be warned, this PC is massive. So this is an ITX build with a Ryzen 7 5800 XT along with an RTX 3070 Ti. Now I've heard that AMD graphics cards work best with Linux, but Nvidia should still be able to run some games. And so I loaded up yet another tutorial on YouTube University. Now this process wasn't as easy as Windows, but it also wasn't that hard either. I mean, the whole process involved copying and pasting some commands on Linux, along with some other click and go steps. While watching it, I also learned a ton of new things. First, Linux runs a lot of programs through something called Wine, and you could think of Wine like the middleman between Windows and Linux. Wait. Hold on, isn't this Linux? Why would Windows be involved? Well, because Linux is such a small platform, it isn't worth it for big companies to support them. Thankfully, Wine makes it so Windows applications can run smoothly, or at least sometimes. You see, it would be amazing if all you had to do was install Wine, and then boom, all your problems are solved, you can now run every Windows application. But it is not as clear cut as that, because in between the middleman, there is yet another middleman called the compatibility layer. And because each application is unique, you might need a certain compatibility layer for this application and this one for another one but the one that works on steam is called proton and let me tell you it worked like a charm i managed to run counter-strike 2 and marvel rivals without hiccups but the problems came when i tried to get cyberpunk 2077 on epic games and because epic games is a completely different launcher from steam i had to watch another tutorial however it was like really similar to the installation for steam but when i tried to boot it up the first time it worked it worked you know it was running smoothly but then i i noticed that it didn't enable mango hud which is the FPS overlay on Linux so I closed it and then the second time I tried to launch into it it was a black screen and then after like I don't know a minute or two it would eventually say cyberpunk has flatlined and because of this I spent a couple hours trying to troubleshoot it I watched multiple videos and that didn't help as well however my efforts would eventually pay off when I got it to launch one more time and as soon as I launched it I got right into the benchmark I didn't want to restart it and risk not being able to open it again and even after I got my benchmarks I kept trying until all right it looks like we're we're gonna have to I don't know just forget about this cyberpunk thing for now <laughs> I gave up. 
So enough yapping, let's get to the results. Starting off with Counter-Strike 2 using the FPS benchmark from the Steam Workshop, I got an average of 393 frames per second on Linux, and on Windows I got an average of 383 frames per second. So the Penguin did take a win here, however it was by a minuscule 2.5% lead. Now for the game I struggled to get running, in Cyberpunk 2077 I got an average of 102 frames per second on Linux, and on Windows I got an average of 108 frames per second, making it the first L of the series. And now for the tiebreaker, in Marvel Rivals, Linux averaged 80 frames per second, and on Windows, it averaged 92 frames per second. Now, the averages might say that Linux took a small L here, however, it's a devastating one. You see, the difference in the 1% lows is a lot larger than the actual averages, and you can clearly see these spikes on the graph. To give you guys an idea, this would make your gameplay feel terrible, and I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy, except for those bronze players that I played in the past in Valorant. Yeah, those people can get it. Now it was finally time to see if my beloved Da Vinci ran smoothly. And for those who don't know about this program, let me catch you up to speed. So Leonardo Da Vinci's great 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 grandson had artistic goals just like his great 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 grandfather. And his goal was to create the greatest editing software known to man. And so with his ancestor's name in mind, Da Vinci Resolve was launched in 2004. And as of today, it is one of the best, if not the best in my opinion, editing software known to man. Okay, maybe the history is off, but it is an amazing program and the one I use for editing. And what's crazy is that the developers created a version to support Linux, which is like rare. Like once in a blue moon, you'll see a program actually supporting Linux. The only problem was that it was designed for one of the other 600 distros that I mentioned earlier that wasn't mint. But at this point, you guys know that YouTube University never fails. And so after a little bit of digging, I got it installed. But because I wanted to compare the performance of Linux and Windows, I had to design a test to compare playback performance and render speed. You see in editing, playback is how smooth a clip will play in your timeline. Now if you have a raw video with no effects, it will be buttery smooth. But the moment you stack effects like pancakes, it will start to look like this. On the other hand, rendering is basically baking all of these individual clips that you edited into one final product. And then the final product would be what you would see in a YouTube video, a film, or a TikTok. And of course, render speed is how fast your computer can put all of these things together. So with these two measurements in mind, I looked up what the big channels were doing that did comparisons of DaVinci performance. And after watching them, I learned that playback performance and render speed are apparently related. So that meant I could kill two birds with one stone by rendering an identical video in both of the operating systems. So I imported a short that I edited on my main PC. However, I came across another hurdle. You see, after I rendered the clip for the first time, I played it back and I noticed that there wasn't audio. Okay, so I did know, I knew that there was going to, there might have been a problem with like MP4 audio files, but I didn't think that was going to be a problem because I had the, the studio version. After doing a bit of research, I found out that if an audio track was recorded in the AAC codec, it wouldn't work properly in DaVinci, and sadly I recorded the voiceover using it. This meant I had to either re-record the voiceover or convert the audio into a format that was compatible with Linux. Now I thought converting the audio would be easier, so I found an open source program called Shutter Encoder that made it simple. I basically just had to drag and drop. And in the end, I ran three render tests on each operating system starting with Linux, where I I got 22 seconds for the first, 23 for the second, and finally 23 seconds for the last render. This made the average render speed sit at 23.3, and on Windows I got an average of 25.6. That is insane. I was never expecting Linux to come out on top of this because usually, I, I don't know, maybe they, I was thinking they don't have the right optimizations for the graphics card, but no, it seems to be running even faster probably because of all the bloatware. Now, render speed was amazing on Linux, but I was still skeptical because I watched a couple YouTube videos before entering this Linux thing, and one YouTuber said that the tracking node didn't work, and in DaVinci, nodes are basically the backbone of visual effects, so it would be a bummer if something as crucial as a tracking node didn't work. But after researching the topic outside of YouTube, I couldn't find what this YouTuber was talking about, and so I decided to test it out myself and created three different clips with a variety of these so-called nodes. In the first one, I used 3D animations, particles, and and color correction nodes along with some other extras but it worked perfectly the second one involved the planet tracker where i tracked an area of a video that one worked perfectly as well the third one i honestly just spammed effects on there because i didn't know what else to throw on there i i ran out of ideas i'm gonna be honest but nevertheless that one worked perfectly as well now because these clips were more graphically intensive than the short i rendered earlier i wanted to put them to the test in the render speed test as well and the results were against linux here 
Yeah, Linux took the L here and it got an average of 66 seconds. Seconds per render and Windows actually got 52 seconds. In addition to DaVinci Resolve, I use a program called Affinity Photo 2. And Affinity is basically an alternative to Photoshop. But unlike Photoshop, it doesn't have the reputation of having sneaky cancellation fees, using its users arts to train AI, and having an overall expensive price to use a program. And so around five months ago when I found it, I paid a one-time fee of $70. And since then I have been rocking it. But recently Canva, the company, has bought out Affinity. And because of this, they decided to repackage it and basically make it a completely different app. So after hearing that, I could only hope that YouTube University had a little tutorial available because they had just released 10 days ago. Luckily, there were YouTubers with installation guides ready to go. Now, I would love to say the installation went as smoothly as DaVinci, but that was simply not the case. You see, the first tutorial I watched got the program installed, but it was lacking one key feature, GPU acceleration. And without it, your computer is basically running on the CPU alone without leveraging out the GPU. And as you can imagine, this can lead to a bit of a laggy experience, especially when you put some load onto the program. And so I kept looking, trying to see if there's an alternative on YouTube, and I didn't find anything directly for Mint. But there was an alternative in a video where somebody was showcasing the installation for people who had different distros and he said if you wanted to install that version it would just be a matter of doing some extra steps to get it running on ubuntu or in other words mint and after going through the creators github i found what i needed to install dependencies and from what i understand dependencies are like tools linux use to solve certain tasks and in this case these were the dependencies i needed to install after installing affinity studio was a walk in the park until i got to testing and while the overall experience was a bit glitchy, I decided to create all three of the thumbnails for the video you are currently watching, and I thought they turned out great. I mean, if you're watching this, that must mean I did something right, right? Okay, maybe not. Maybe you guys just watch this because you guys are fans of the channel. For that, you know, I always appreciate it. But anyways, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't create all three of them using this version of Affinity that was extremely glitchy. So instead, I created the first one using the program with GPU acceleration. And then I had to switch over to the version without GPU acceleration because that one was wasn't nearly as glitchy and it made the overall experience just a bit better. And with it, I created the last two thumbnails I was wrapping up along with this last one that I chose to practice. And I think it came pretty close to the one the youtuber created but with that out of the way in order to compare the performance of linux and windows there's actually an inbuilt benchmark in affinity and i ran that both in windows and linux and sadly linux took another l here editor jose here and i've been going through the footage and linux actually didn't take an l here because every category besides gpu rasterization linux actually won so let let me show you guys real quick so for example this is the, the one score where windows beat linux but everything else as far as CPU and this single GPU score, Linux also beat Windows. So in reality, they were actually like neck and neck with each other. And if it weren't for the glitches, I would say they're just about even. After spending this much time on Linux, I was starting to become one of them. You know the stereotype, don't play dumb. So I took action and I went outside to touch some grass. Ah, oh, much better. But now it was time to reflect and tell you guys the pros and cons of Linux from my perspective. Starting with pro number one, Linux works great for programs that are backed by big companies. For example, in the video I tested out Steam and I mentioned that it's running off something called Proton. But what I didn't tell you guys is that Proton is developed by Steam. So maybe that's why my experience running Steam games went so smoothly. Con number one, there are loopholes you have to go through to install some programs and over time this can get frustrating. Pro number two, the PM Penguin stands for privacy. Now it is no surprise that Windows would love a taste of your data but the penguin doesn't eat data it eats fish all jokes aside not only does linux have an ad free operating system but it also gives you the tools to go private online as well for example if you want to de-google your life here would be what you would see on google but here would be what linux mint gives you out of the box but one won't look through your data. Con number two, because Linux is a smaller platform, when you encounter a problem, you're gonna either have to one, ignore it, or two, try to fix it yourself. Now, if you guys remembered, I encountered a problem with Affinity and it was like glitchy and laggy and all this weird stuff, and I ignored it. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't wanna spend another hour or two trying another tutorial to see if it worked or not. Problem number three, the Penguin offers amazing customizations, but you have to add it yourself. Look at how clean this is though. So you guys can see, 
I'll pop the tab right here, but my second monitor is saying it took an hour to do this. Now, why exactly would this be a pro when you have to do more work? Well, because you're adding these features in yourself, you actually know what they do. For example, I installed this hotspot feature. Now, every time I drag my cursor to the left corner of my screen, I get all my tabs displayed onto a single screen. On the other hand, what are the chances that someone on Windows knows about the new features? Because nobody actually reads like the update notes on Windows, or at least I don't. I honestly don't read them. Like I'll magically click a shortcut and I'll see like what it does, right? And I'll be like, dang, that's what it does. And because you designed your user interface, you'll know your tools better than you would on Windows without adding any of the unnecessary bloat. And now for the last and final con. The Penguin will continue to face compatibility problems because it isn't worth it for businesses to invest money into it just yet. You see, somewhere along the lines, I became curious to see how many more Linux users there would be after the end of support of Windows 10. But when I checked it, all I see was an exponential line of Mac OS pointing up to the moon. So that means more devices are flooding into the Apple environment instead of going to Linux, which is pointing down. And let's be honest, if companies see these graphs continue to go down, what are the chances that they would choose to put money into Linux? Right, it's probably not even worth it. With that being said, my experience with Linux was pretty good and I can't really complain for the problems I did face because if I had just spent more time into actually solving the puzzles and the problems, I would have fixed it. For example, let's take a look at the Affinity case. So if for whatever reason that program didn't work, there's always an alternative on Linux. In the video PewDiePie made, he actually said he was trying out GIMP. So worst case came to worst, I could have went from Affinity to GIMP and it would just been another learning curve. But with that out of the way, that leaves us with two final and last questions. Will I be swapping over to Linux? No, not right now. Right now my priority is YouTube and flipping computers. So anything that gets in the way of that right now, I'd rather not deal with, including Linux. But I know as I get older, I'll reach that point in my life where I'll get mad that people are stalking me and selling my information for free. So, yeah, eventually I'll come around to it or who knows, maybe in a couple months I'll change my mind. So you never know with these type of things. And the next question is, will I try Arch? Uh, uh, that's a question for another day. Till next time.